esteemed principal mr dilbag singh and respected teachers it gives me immense joy to be in your midst this morning and to interact with you to be a teacher <coughs> in this age of knowledge explosion is indeed a great challenge so let me at the outset congratulate every one of you for facing that challenge so successfully i have always enjoyed visiting schools and colleges meeting students and teachers and interacting with them i know it should be much more exciting to do that with you because you are not only teachers but are also students a beautiful blend indeed i said you are also students for two reasons the first reason is that many of you look young young like students the second reason is that you are presently attending a workshop which shows that you have a desire to learn even further that you are open minded learning has indeed become an inevitable lifelong process 2000 years ago the great uh, woman saint and tamil poetess avayar had said what i have learnt is equal to as much as a handful of sand whereas what i am yet to learn is as much as this universe uh, what she said so long ago has has assumed even more significance now because we are today living in the midst of an intellectual explosion the outburst of information about the world and ourselves is spectacular and stimulating the physical and biological sciences and the social sciences as well are now amazingly alert and the universe of human knowledge is doubling every 3 to 5 years even the economy today is called the knowledge economy knowledge has truly become power now and once knowledge is power teachers can definitely assume a leadership position in any case i think that teachers are leaders i believe that a teacher has to be a leader i believe also that a teacher has to be more a leader than anything else once teachers become leaders we will not at all have to worry about the future of our youths teachers are indeed leaders they lead from darkness to light lead me from darkness to light says an ancient indian scripture so the subject of leadership is as much relevant to the career of a teacher as much as it is relevant to the career of a business executive or a politician or a social worker a leadership is one subject which has remained relevant and important all through the ages and throughout the history of human progress and civilization and shall remain so as long as the human race exists on this earth leadership and civilization are so intimately connected that they are inseparable similarly leadership and student motivation are so intimately connected that they are inseparable the behavior of the students and their performance are in a sense only reflections of the kind of leadership that the institution has provided to the son father is the leader to the student teacher is the leader and to a teacher trainee in an institution the senior teacher or the head of the department becomes the leader the students need and seek guidance support and help and are of course entitled to receive all this but when the teacher fails to provide the right leadership they get disillusioned and frustrated so the quality of leadership of the teachers will determine the morale of the students of that institution similarly the junior teachers and the teacher trainees need and seek guidance support and help and are of course entitled to receive all these but when the senior teacher or the head of the department fails to provide the right leadership 
they get disillusioned and frustrated. So the quality of leadership of the seniors of an institution will determine the morale of the junior teachers of that institution. This applies equally to the youth in general. If anyone thinks that the youth is not moving in the right direction, if anyone thinks that its energy is not harnessed, is not channelized, I am afraid we the elders alone will have to take the blame for that. Anyone who goes through the pages of history will notice that whenever and wherever there was sound leadership, the youth was moving in the right direction, pursuing lofty ideals. There cannot be anything more important in a society than the character of its youth. And this depends very largely upon the outlook of the elders and the lead they provide. So leadership assumes a paramount importance in shaping and molding the personality and character of youths. The youth is already talented. The child is already talented. All that we need to do is to nurture it, to groom it, to preserve it and to protect it. Even if we cannot do any or all of these, at least let us not put hurdles on the path of the youth's progress, on the path of the child's progress. Let us not plant mental blockades in the thoughts or in the thinking process of the youth and thus allow the child talent to blossom and to grow at least on its own. Child by nature is optimistic, youth by nature is optimistic, but it is made to lose these positive qualities, I am very sorry to say, by the influence of the elders in most cases. That is why a great man in India had said, do not destroy the faith of any man. If you can, give him something better, but do not destroy what he has. I will tell you a story to drive home this point. A group of frogs were traveling through the woods, through the thick forests when two of them fell into a deep pit. All the other frogs gathered around the pit and when they saw how deep the pit was, they told the two unfortunate frogs that they would never get out. They advised the two frogs not to try to jump out of the pit but to die peacefully. But maybe driven by the instinct for life, the instinct for living, the two frogs ignored the comments and tried their best to jump out of the pit. The crowd of frogs kept yelling at them to stop the pain and suffering and just die. Finally, one of the two frogs took heed to what the other frogs were telling and as a result he lost hope. He then fell down exhausted and died. But the other fellow continued to jump up and up he tried as hard as he could to jump out of the pit and the group of frogs kept telling him to give up that he was as good as dead. The more they told him to give up, the more forcefully did he jump. And finally, to the utter surprise and shock of all the frogs gathered around there, he jumped out of the pit. All the frogs gathered around him and congratulated him and told him, that his name would go down in the Guinness Book of Records for having made the longest ever jump by a frog. They asked him to explain the secret of his success. They inquired him, how come he never felt discouraged despite their telling him constantly that he would not be able to make it, that he would not be able to come out of the entanglement. But this frog did not at all appear to be understanding what they were telling him or what they were asking him. He was innocently blinking at them. And again, to the utter surprise and shock of all the frogs gathered around there, he said something. And this is the anti-climax of the story. His jumping out of the pit was the climax. Now what I am going to tell is the anti-climax. He thanked all the other frogs for all the support and the encouragement that they gave him, but for which he said he would not have jumped out of the pit. Only then did the frogs realize, what did they realize? Anyone knows this story? I think you know? Yes? Don't know. <laughs> Only then did the 
other frogs realized that this fellow was deaf. I think you inferred correctly. Very good. <laughs> this fellow was deaf. He did not at all hear what they were telling him. He only saw them very forcefully trying to convey something. Very forcefully trying to articulate something. And he misunderstood that they were telling him not to give up but to continue to try to uh, jump and uh, jump out of the pit. This story has a few morals. One obvious moral is that it is better to be deaf than to be listening to words of discouragement. One need not be deaf. One can learn to turn a deaf ear to those who discourage him. Og Magino wrote, I will hear not those who weep and complain for their disease is contagious. Let them join the sheep. The slaughterhouse of failure is not my destiny. I will persist until I succeed. Another moral which is very relevant for the teachers and also for the parents. I was wondering whether any one of you would try to say that. Uh, it's very relevant for the uh, teachers. Uh, please feel free to come forward and say there is no wrong learning. Uh, maybe you will be throwing an additional light if you say something different from what I had in my mind. Yes. Pardon me? To continue to try. You have to give them the faith that if they continue to try they will succeed. Another moral which is very relevant for the teachers. Ah, yes? No. Yes, nothing is impossible. Take everything as a challenge. If something looks impossible, take it as a challenge. Beautiful. Our limitations are in our mind. Great. Uh, a student or anybody, encouragement and uh, appreciation is the lifeline for a student to come up in life. Very good. Beautiful. Encouragement is very important. A teacher has to encourage children. There is power of life and death in the tongue. A word of encouragement from a teacher or a parent is all that is needed to lift up a child who is already down and to make him see through the day. And a word of discouragement from a teacher or a parent or any elderly person is all that is needed to destroy him, to demolish his self-esteem. So speak life to children. Give them words of encouragement. My appeal to the teachers and to the parents is be kind to children. Give them freedom. Give them guidance. Give them all your love, care and affection. Never be rude with them. Never be indifferent towards them. Forgive them if they make mistakes. And always look for opportunities to praise them and to reward them. I assure you they will become great and successful. If you would not mind, I would like to repeat my appeal. Be kind to children. Give them freedom. Give them guidance. Give them all your love, care and affection. Never be rude with them. Never be indifferent towards them. Never talk pessimistically in their presence. Never talk pessimistically in their presence. Never discourage them. Forgive them if they make mistakes. And always look for opportunities to praise them and to reward them. I assure you they will become great and successful. Thomas Alva Edison was dismissed from the school when he was in the fourth class. While dismissing him, the headmaster told Edison's mother, your son is unfit for the school. Pat came the reply from Edison's mother, no, your school is unfit for my son. <laughs> and she grew up Edison telling him all the time, that he was born to achieve something very great in his life. That he would achieve something so great that his name would go down in history. That mankind would remember him as long as mankind exists on this earth. These words she told him very repeatedly. And as a result, Edison grew up with the faith that he was going to be a very great person and he was going to achieve something very remarkable. That enabled him to set an impossible target, a target that appeared to be impossible. He said he would invent a lamp that would glow and give light without having to burn oil. When he said there would be light without fire, people laughed at him, they scoffed at him. They said that he had gone crazy, he had gone mad. But he never felt discouraged because the foundation of faith in himself was laid very strongly in him by his mother. 
he failed a thousand times before he invented the electric bulb he did not feel discouraged because his mother had laid the strong foundation in him of faith in his abilities to achieve what he set out to achieve <coughs> a teacher <coughs> as a leader instills faith in the young minds once faith is instilled in the young minds they will scale very great heights they will do wonders we have to train the students to set specific goals we have to enable them to develop a burning desire to achieve what they set out to achieve and an absolute faith in their capacity to achieve what they have set out to achieve providing such a mental framework i believe means providing the real basic infrastructure for promoting youth talent and only teachers and parents with leadership qualities can provide this